and affect this in labs for fire safety engineering. He is a specialist in numerical model and simulation of fire and smoke spread and radiation heat transfer, including heat and smoke ventilation. He has been involved in several large European research projects with regard to uh, fire safety in tunnels, heat radiation through the uh, fire resistant glazing, external flaming, and coupling of CFD codes with uh, final element codes. And he is a member of CNTC 127 fire safety engineering. Please. Thank you for this uh, introduction. So I will present the work we did uh, to, for the experimental assessment of that risk due to large fires in the tunnel with a sprinkler water mist system. And uh, this black uh, will occur due to the rupture of the tanker, which is heated up by the fire. Um, I will give an uh, introduction, uh, I will tell something about the background to the test, the test method, experimental method, of experimental results, and then the assessment of black risk from the test results. And then if we have time, I will go into detail about the assessment method and finally some conclusions will be given. Okay. Uh, these tests were ordered in 2007 by Rijkswaterstaat and they are part of the Department of our Ministry of Public Works and Transportation. And they, uh, they ordered full-scale tests to test the effectiveness of a water mist system in a tunnel. There are two tunnels in the Netherlands which are equipped with this type of uh, water mist system. And the test had to be performed in the Runehammer tunnel and that's a test tunnel in Norway. It's an abandoned tunnel, there's no traffic there anymore, but you can do uh, very well uh, these type of tests. And these tests had to be performed by Syntep and Bell, and uh, with the assistance of Aquasys systems, and they were the suppliers of the Wadami system. But these tests also proved a unique op opportunity for additional tests. Uh, for instance, to determine the tenability conditions downstream of the fire, and also to determine the risk of a blast when a LG tank is near the fire. And these tests had to be done by effectors and were done by effectors. So generally, this paper deals with the question, can we allow LBG tanks in tunnels with a water mist system? So, here's the test principle. We measure the thermal behavior of a water-filled LBG tank, so we do not dare to put there a real LBG tank in the tunnel, but it has more or less the same size, it is really an LBG tank, but filled with water. And then from this uh, thermal behavior we predict the risk of a blast, in fact we predict the risk of a rupture of the tank, for a real reference tank. And we, we decide to, to use a full-size tank in the tunnel because this ensures a realistic heat transfer to the tank. So, see the realistic flow of air and mist around the tank, the radiation absorption through the water mist and the water layer, condensation of water vapor on the tank surface and the runoff of water from the surface. If you want to model that type of thing, I think that's very complex. So we just choose to put a real-size tank in a tunnel which has additional, which of course has other problems to do that. Now, first of all, uh, there has been performed a simulation study and it showed that 10% LBG filling in a tank would give the highest flat risk. And therefore, we, uh, we put 5% water in the test tank to have more or less the same thermal capacity of uh, the LBG. Here's uh, an overview of uh, the test setup. Uh, you can see uh, a uh, top view of the tunnel. Uh, here, sorry, that would be the other. Here's the test tank. Ventilation from left to right. Uh, we, this is a solid fire load. It is shown here from the back. It's representing a, a heavy goods uh, vehicle. Uh, we also had the pool fire, it's shown here. And pool fire was placed in the middle. <coughs> at uh, about the size of 25 by 4 meters. 
And this also shows our, our uh, testing after one test. This is the layout of the bottom is system. This is a cross section of the tunnel with uh, the tank here. We have three nozzle lines showing here, and the spray nozzles are uh, located with an interval of two meter. And a section of a total section of 65 meter was length was in the tunnel, but 25 meter could be uh, switched on separately. Now the test tank. Uh, and the length of 6 meter, a diameter of 2 meter, thickness of the tank wall 8.8 meter, meter, and we had a reference tank with slightly different uh, uh, dimensions. So, in fact, the results of the test tank are, uh, will give a, a little more heating up, so they are uh, worst case results in that respect. Here, the location of the instrumentation we have. <coughs> we have a total of 65 thermocouples placed on five uh, cross sections uh, and of course uh, on the front as well. They are uh, placed on the inner side of the tank shell, uh, on the outer side of the tank uh, surface and then 10 centimeters uh, away from the tank surface. We also have temperature inside the tank, on the water in the tank. And also very important, we measure the heat flux uh, going into the water with 13 heat flux meters. A total of eight tests uh, have been performed. After the third test, we installed our system. So we, uh, we had five tests with the system. And three of them were full fire tests, where there were uh, with additives uh, added to the, the water or not, and two of them were uh, solid uh, fire test. And this last test is a, is a very special one because here we delayed the suppression. In the other part, suppression was determined on the basis of thermal detection, but here we delayed the system so we have a much longer heat load period. And these are the nominal uh, heat release rates associated with this type of file load, if we do not print them. Some test results. I just show you the maximum, outside, the maximum temperatures. These are the maximum out temperatures just outside the tank, 10 centimeter away from the tank surface. Uh, here's time.